have, I'm going to share the word this evening, share with you some things about Sukkot. And then we're going to usually, what's that? Oh, they say they can't hear me. Can you all hear me? Okay. So we, we're going to bring a word, but then if you, we take this time personally to pray for you and um, see if the Lord has a word for you. And usually he shows up. And uh, how many of you have ever been touched by a word from Adonai in this season? So this is the season, this is the time. We encourage you all, there are some that are older that have asked if they could be, you know, up to, kind of toward the front of the line. Um, usually we go outside and we do this in the sukkah, but this year we brought the outdoors to you, uh, doing things a little bit differently. But I believe that Adonai is going to honor this tonight, amen? I believe he's already honored, and I'll tell you why I think he's honored, because you have chosen to come and celebrate him tonight. This is all about him. It's not about Sar, it's not about us, it's about him. And, and this is a rehearsal for the millennial reign of the Messiah when he comes. So how many are ready for the millennial reign? Amen. Praise Messiah. So let's look at this. I, wanna, I want you to, if you have your word, and I'm going to get my Bible over here. Turn with me if you'd like. I'm going to go into uh, Devarim, Deuteronomy 16. Are you awake? <laughs> okay. Too much hamburger. Too, get him some coffee. Praise Messiah. Would you stand for the reading of the word? Barakhu ataronai hamevorach. Blessed is the Holy One who's to be blessed, and blessed is the Holy One forever and ever. And all His people said, Amen. Amen. Go with me into Devarim. We are here gathering at Sukkot. Devarim 16. Starting in verse 13, you shall observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days, and when you've gathered from your threshing floor and from your wine press, and you shall rejoice in your feast. Everyone say rejoice. rejoice. You and your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, which are within your gates. So that covers just about everybody, doesn't it? But notice that these people are in the gates. They're in the perimeters of the, of, the, of, the establish, of the establishment of Zion. So we're saying, well, how does that pertain to us? The gates, really, gates are borders. Gates are places of safety, but they're borders to tell you where to go and where not to go. How many know that the Bible is a spiritual gate? Really, it is a spiritual gate. They're borders to tell you where to go, what not to do, what to do in life. But the gate is Yeshua himself. The door, of, literally, he's the door. You can't get into God's presence without going through Yeshua the door. He said it. That's where we get into trouble sometimes. People say, well, we can get in another way. You can't get in another way. There's one way to experience the face of Adonai himself. Yeshua is the door. So everybody say gates. Seven days you shall keep a sacred feast or festival to Adonai your God in the place which Adonai chooses because Adonai Yahweh your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the works of your hands so that you surely rejoice. Before you're seated, tell your neighbor, I'm surely rejoicing tonight. You can be seated. So before we get started with the, um, with the prophetic tonight, I want to take you back to the days of Moshe. Father, help us tonight and give us ears to hear, eyes to see, a heart that's receptive. May we not leave the same. Father, calm our, calm our hearts, calm our families, calm the babies, calm everybody tonight. Give us shalom and joy in Yeshua's name. All those people said amen. So there are traditions that have come from the past. We see that we have the lulav, the esrog, they call these the four species, where tradition would tell us that you are to take, there's an esrog in this box, I'm sure, but you are to take these elements. The rabbis have developed a, a concept of taking the elements where the Bible speaks of the beautiful fruit of the land of the trees, the, the uh, leafy branches. I'm going to set those over here, Juanita. You take these and you are to uh, really decorate your sukkah with them. But they, the rabbis they have turned this really into a tradition to where you wave them to the north, the south, the east, and the west. And, and it's a tradition that rabbis do, that some Jewish people do. We see the palm frond as a sign of victory. Um, this is the fruit of the believer. 
the victory of the believer, the sweet smell of the believer, the beauty of the believer. All of these are incorporated into the believers um, in Israel. So we're to, have a, we're to be a sweet smell, right? We do this in our sukkahs every year. People do this every year. They decorate, they wave if you're not familiar with it. It's a symbol, it's symbolic of who we are to be in the Messiah. Sukkot is full of customs and traditions. Sukkot is the one holiday that I could share with for hours. I won't do tonight, but I, I'm telling you, you could list through the list of things at Sukkot. You say, well, it's about this, it's about this. It's called the Festival of Ingathering. It's a harvest party. It's a, it's a feast of the nations. It's a festival of joy. We've talked about joy today for all people, not just Israel, but all people. This is a time when we look back, it has to do with clouds. You'll notice we decorated the, the, um, our tabernacle tonight with what looks like clouds. Everybody say clouds. I love that. Doesn't it look like clouds this evening? Even, in fact, when the air conditioning is on, it looks like the clouds are moving. It looks like there's light within the clouds. I love that. But also we had a vision of the stars where you, when you build your sukkah, you're to see the clouds. In ancient Israel, you were to follow the glory cloud. So you're watching the cloud that keeps you by night and by day. Who was in that cloud? Yeshua himself, the Almighty. He's leading and keeping Israel. He was awake at night to guard them and keep them. They would follow that glory, keeping an eye on the cloud. And when the cloud moved and the shofar sounded, they moved as well as a camp of people, by each tribe, by each individual. But you always keep your eye on the cloud. Let me ask you a question as we look at this and we remind ourselves of the cloud. Are you keeping an eye on God's glory cloud? Are you following? Are you quick to follow the glory cloud to say, I know he's leading me, and you watch and see where he's leading? Or are you saying, you know, it's kind of comfortable in your life. I like it in my life where I'm at. But what if he tells you, you need to, you need to go here. You need to move here. You need to do this here. Our flesh gets very comfortable with saying, we're going to, maybe that's hard for us to do. Keep your eye on the glory cloud. We're living in such a day and a season where life, everything we know, in our society is upside down. It's being turned upside down. And I have many people tell me, Rabbi, we just want our old, old lives back. We just want to go back. Honey, you, if you're in the spirit of Messiah, you're always called to move forward. And even the ancient Israelites, when they moved from camp to camp to camp, it was not always easy. It was not always comfortable. Moshe, can't we go back to where the water was? Can we go back to where, you know, remember that camp with the trees? And remember how nice that was? Moshe said, we're following the glory cloud. You're following, you're following the glory cloud. And so when we think of the clouds tonight, and I'm just holding these. I'm not sure why I'm holding them now. I just picked them up. <laughs> but when we think of the glory cloud, we are going to, we're called to follow the glory cloud. Keep your eye on the glory cloud. Don't be distracted with the things of this earth. All of this, guys, is passing away. How many of you, let me ask you a question, how many of you know somebody that has passed in the last year? Look at the hands. I want you to hold your hands up. I want everybody to look. All of us almost in this building have known somebody that's passed. They're, they're in one place or another. All of this stuff in this earth is just stuff. But this is a learning process for us. This is a place where we're called to reflect His glory in us. That glory cloud upon us, in fact, the glory cloud within us. That we're called now, and it may look weird, and we may look weird to people. You, you might look a little different to people, but it's a good thing if you're in the Messiah. If you're doing the things of Messiah, that's a good thing, right? Like this, listen, I'm not telling you not to enjoy this life. Everything that Adonai gives us in this life, families, children, homes, all of that is good. But listen, it's temporary. It's just temporary. We are passing through this. We're called as a people to keep our eyes on the glory and, and really to uh, understand that this is temporary. We're called to continue our journey and our walk. Find two people and tell them, keep your eye on the cloud. <laughs> keep your eye on the cloud. When we talk about the cloud, it's the cloud of brightness. It's called the, it's called the Shekinah. Try that Hebrew word, say Shekinah. Now, the, the churches will say Shekinah. If you've ever heard the word Shekinah glory, um, it's actually Shekinah Kavod, Shekinah HaKavod. The, glo the glory, we're going to talk about that tonight because the, the Shekinah is the glow of the cloud. It's the brightness of the cloud. That when Yeshua came, 
The Bible tells us very clearly, it says that he came and he tabernacled among men. So I want you to see in your picture the glory cloud full of all the glory. That, that cloud, literally, that is the brightness of the Father's face came and dwelt in a tabernacle of flesh. He took up on himself a sukkah. He is a living, moving sukkah. Not everybody could recognize that. Not even today, not everybody can recognize that. But he is the cloud in the sukkah. And so it's interesting that he's walking around and he's doing ministry, and he's, he's not doing anything that he doesn't hear Abba, the father, say, right? They say, hey, why don't you do this? Let's go over here, let's go over there. And he's following the glory cloud because he's listening. He says, I don't do anything without my father telling me what to do. Everything I do, he said, I do. He's listening. Wouldn't that be great if we could hear that clearly? But I think really it comes with little steps, little baby steps, to say if you're obedient in the little things, you'll be obedient in the big things. How many know that? Wave at me. If you're obedient, say this with me. If I'm obedient in the little, I'll be obedient in the big. And you will. When he tells you, this is the way, this is the door that's open for you now. This is the uh, person that I want you to minister to. Call this person on the phone. Pray for that person. Take those little steps. I want you to give, just a, give some money to that person. Help that person. Do what you can for that person. Those are steps, little baby steps. And when you take those, the door can open up and even get bigger. And you can be, I believe that we can truly hear the Father's voice to tell us, this is the way, walk in it, journey in it. And it's a journey of simcha, it's a journey of joy. So here's Yeshua, and he tells people, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's the glory cloud. It's interesting that on we read in John 7, where it's the great and last day of the feast, Hoshana Rabbah, where they would take living water, they would pour the living water out, Israel would gather around, the priests would celebrate, and Yeshua interrupts the service. I love that. Yeshua interrupts the service and he says, basically, he says, hey, you want living water? The Mayim Hayim. He says, I am the Mayim Hayim. He's the one that gives us life. It's all about water. What are clouds in the natural? Clouds are made of water. Isn't that interesting? The water goes, clouds rain down, the water goes back up and forms a cloud again. Interesting, a picture of the Messiah himself who is the word who comes down, gathers us like rainwater. What's going to happen to us one day? We're going up. How many are getting ready to go up, right? So these are all pictures of the sukkah. You have in a traditional sukkah, if you go outside, and you're welcome to do so tonight, go outside, take some time to pray in our sukkah outdoors. You're called to eat in the sukkah, to fellowship in the sukkah. You're called to come into the sukkah. We don't ban anybody. We don't say, hey, well, you guys can come in, but Dr. Pete, your row, I don't know. You might have to take a couple tests before you come in. Not what Sakota is about. Sakota is about coming in and experiencing the joy and the rest of Adonai. It's a place of rest. It's a place of safety. You don't have to worry. I love what the rabbis say about this. They say that when you step in, we'll, we'll say this is our sukkah for tonight. When we step in, it's like stepping into future time with Adonai. So when you step into the borders, everybody say borders. So these are the borders of our sukkah. And when I step in, I can still see you, but I'm in, the rabbis say, you are stepping into a future time event. What would that time event be? It would be in the future when the Messiah comes and establishes a covering over all his people. I want you to think about that. When we step into our sukkahs, when we're eating in our sukkahs, there's a tradition that says this. It says that when you come into your sukkah, the, the Jewish people do something very interesting. They invite people into their sukkah. You start with Abraham. And then you invite Isaac. And you invite Jacob into your sukkah. You invite King David in your sukkah. You take the time to invite the tzaddikim, the saints, into your sukkah. You're calling them in. You're beckoning them in. And I thought, well, wait a minute. That sounds kind of strange because they're all dead. Aren't they dead? Well, yes and no. Their bodies are. But what about when Yeshua said, you know, Yeshua said he's the God of the living. They are, they are experiencing the life and the presence of the Almighty himself, just as we should be. And I find that interesting that if uh, this week we celebrated with friends who invited us into their sukkah, and we got our food, and we got our plates, just like we did tonight, they have a big sukkah. 
And so we came into the sukkah. By the way, the sukkah, according to the rabbis, can be as long as you want it to be. There's no dimension. There's, you, can't, you don't have to cut it off. It could be as big as a city. Yeshua said this, in my father's house are many. I go away to prepare a place for you. His, there's no length. There's no, there's no end to his sukkah, so to speak. And so here is Yeshua, who is the father's sukkah. And it's very interesting that we say, well, those people are dead. I was, in, I was invited in, my family and I, some of you. How many of you celebrated at Friends this week? You went to Friends sukkahs? Yeah, they invite you in. Now it's up to you to come into their sukkah or not. Hey, brother, we got food, we got fellowship. We're going to have an awesome time. Come on over to the sukkah and celebrate. And we could say, sure, we'll come. But if we don't show, that's on us. I love, I love seeing out here tonight. I see friends and family, people I know, people I don't know. But you know what I love about this? You all gathered in one spot for one thing, to celebrate him. No matter where you're from, different churches, different communities, black, white, ever, all colors, one in Messiah. And so we tonight invited you into our sukkah, but you know why? Because he invites us into his sukkah. Now, let me share with you a story. Yeshua's on the mountain. This is written in the New Covenant Scriptures. Here's Yeshua. He's on the mountaintop. Come, let us go up to the mountain. Yeshua's on the mountaintop, and the disciples are why? Who was with him, remember? Peter, James, and Yochanan. And so they're watching him. They're praying. I believe they fell asleep at one point. But they, but they look up, and they see Yeshua is transformed, and it says that his clothes are, are completely, you could never get them that white. He's, got, he's shining with the glory of the Father. His face is shining. He's shining on top of a mountain. And he's got, who has he got with him? They recognize Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah. Moses being the prophets. I'm sorry, Moses being the Torah. Elijah representing the prophets. The Torah and the prophets are always seen pointing to Yeshua as Messiah. And so here, but we say, wait a minute, I thought they were dead. Strange, isn't it, to see them alive now. They're with Yeshua. And they're conversing with Yeshua. How does that happen if they're dead? I don't have all the answers. But I believe somewhere that this timeline, and, and how many of you know that with Adonai, he can step in and out of time? He made time. And so here they are on a mountaintop, and they're all shining with the glory and it says this, if you read about it, it says, I'm paraphrasing, but it says that a cloud comes down and overshadows them. What cloud do you think that was? Isn't it interesting that they also say, hey, they said, Master, they say, Rabbi, this is a good thing. Why don't we build three, ah, oh, you're getting it, three tabernacles or three sukkots. Why don't we build some sukkahs? Interesting. This should remind you of another story, Moses on a mountaintop. And he also experiences the glory. He, the glory cloud is on the top of that mountain. It's very interesting. It's a very personal time because Adonai tells him nobody else is allowed even on the other mountain beside it. He said, everybody, nobody else but Moshe. When Ad, listen to me tonight. When Adonai has a word for you and speaks to you, he's, he's concerned about you. And sometimes he's saying to you, put everybody else out, put everybody else aside. This is between me and you. So Moses gets up there and he experiences the glory. And he comes down. And what is his face doing? It's shining. A future prophetic event of what happens when he's with Yeshua. Here's my thought. What if, I, this is a crazy thought. But what if Moshe was taken out of time and stepped out of time? What if the, I know it's crazy. I know this is, wow, this is how I think it. But, but think about this. What if the disciples actually saw something, all this converging of, Things happening. Who's to say? Why not? God is able to do exceedingly above what we can think or ask, right? My point is this. Two men on a mountain. One is Moshe. One is Messiah. One is glowing. His face is glowing. They cover his face. The other comes and he tabernacles among men. In a sense, his face is covered too because they can't see the glory cloud within him. Spiritually, people could at times. He would walk through, he'd walk through the temple and somebody would prophesy, somebody would proclaim who he was. Um, Anna or a high priest or the priesthood, somebody would get a glimpse, this is the one. 
It's interesting that there were points even where devils would go, what are you doing here? Because they got glimpses of who he was. Don't take us out before our time. He's the glory in a sukkah. If I could say it this way tonight, I want to wrap, I want to wrap this. I want, to, I want you to see some things. It's very important. The Father has a tabernacle. The Father has a sukkah. How many of you know that? So he's got a, he's got a house in heaven. He's got a house here, right? How many know this is his house? How many of you know you're his house? When you came to know the Messiah, Yeshua, you received him and you asked him in, and he put his glory cloud in you. But watch this. Yeshua is the Father's tabernacle. He literally is the Father's tabernacle. For 33 years, he dwelled on the earth. For a specific season of time, his tabernacle came down for a little while, didn't it? And then the tabernacle rose up into a new form. I want you to think about this. If Yeshua is the tabernacle, and I hope I'm making you think tonight. If Yeshua is the tabernacle, the Father, just like we do, the Father says, hey, come into my sukkah. Come into my sukkah. And we say, how does he say that? Because he says, Yeshua is my sukkah. Come experience the, my rest, my provision, my shalom in my son who is my sukkah. And when you step into Yeshua, you experience rest, peace, salvation. Everything that you need is in Yeshua. He is the sukkah of Sukkot. And the Father invites Jew and Gentile into his sukkah at this season. I can point out to you historically, I believe Yeshua was born at Sukkot. I believe that. I believe we are celebrating the birthday of Yeshua in the earth today. Now, it's interesting. He doesn't force us into his sukkah, does he? If I invite you, which I invited you today into our sukkah, I told you, come on, go outside, come in our sukkah, celebrate with us. You had a choice. You say, Rabbi, yes, I'll come, I'll experience, I'll be a part. Or you had a choice to say, no, I'm so busy. Life is so busy. I don't know what to do. I just can't make it. You're missing the blessing. And the Father says, come to me, all you who are what? Weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. All you have to do is recognize the Father's sukkah, receive it, and step in. And say, I receive that word. See, the Father, is the, the Father sent his word to deliver us, right? And heal us, right? So when we receive that word of the Father, just like ancient Israel received the Torah, we're called to receive the word, who is Yeshua. When we receive that word, that's what we need. Not to say you do away with everything else, but I'm saying he is the word of the Father. We receive that, we're healed, we experience life. How many of you experience life in Yeshua? Would you just give him a hand clap of praise? Would you do that? But it's up to you and I. As believers, we have stepped into the Father's sukkah, and we experience the life of Messiah. In him we live, we move, and we have our being. He is the sukkah, guys. So when we celebrate Sukkot, remember, you have, remember the lulav, the Ezra, all that's in Yeshua. All of that is in Yeshua. You have victory. You're supposed to produce fruit. You're supposed to shine for his glory. You're supposed to give off a good smell for the kingdom. How many of you smell good tonight? I hope so. Because <laughs> we've got to minister to you. So <laughs> We've got to minister personally to you. So I hope you all are smelling good. But we're called to smell good even in the Messiah, a sweet smell, a fragrance to those around us. Here's the good news. It doesn't have to be just once a year. It doesn't just have to be at Sukkot. You can receive Yeshua anytime. But I really, I really believe that he calls us as a people. Why do we do Sukkot? Because I believe it's, number one, a rehearsal. But it's also a reminder for us. It's almost a calibration. We're recalibrating our spirits to say, you know what? I'm going to have rest in him. I'm going to have shalom in him. He's going to provide for my needs. And, and even if the world is fading fast and the Dems hate the Republicans and the Republicans hate the Dems and this is going on and that's going on, people are shooting in grocery stores and everything else and the COVID and the sickness and stuff, the D variant, the whatever variants they have flowing through the pike now. All of that is fear. We can, we can look at Adonai Sukkot in our spirit and say, I come into my father's sukkah. 
And I'm going to rest in Him in this season. Stay focused. Don't let your eyes get off into other things because that will disturb your heart. Stay focused on the sukkah. That's Yeshua. Nothing else. He's the Word. How many know that? Wave at me. Stay focused on the Father's sukkah. Because if, if can believers step out of the sukkah? I didn't say you couldn't be saved. But as believers, we can, we can recognize, we can actually step out of our places of safety if we're not in obedience. So we have to stay focused in this season. My prayer for us as a body of people is that, number one, if you don't know Yeshua, I see a few faces, I don't know. If you don't know Yeshua as Messiah, you need to tonight. You need, you need to go on out to the sukkah and ask Yeshua in your life and in your heart. Receive who He is, the Messiah of Israel. Amen? The Messiah of the world. But the second thing is I want us to understand, let's recalibrate our spirits by the Ruach HaKodesh tonight, and let's understand that He is the most important thing. He is the most, not your jobs, not the person, but you may love the person beside you, but the most important thing in life is Adonai Sukkah. Being in that sukkah, being in that place of safety, that's Psalm 91. So when the world looks at us and says, how can you have hope? Why are you smiling tonight? How can you celebrate? Haven't, haven't you read the numbers? The numbers in Ohio are gone up and everything's happening. The economy's crashing. You can look at them and say, you know what? My hope is not based on that. My joy is not based on that. I'm keeping my eyes on the living sukkah. And in him I live and I move and I have my being. You're going to get people's attention with that one, aren't you? Oh, you were quiet on that. You're going to get people's attention on that one. You tell them that, they're going to look at you like, what the heck is a sukkah? That opens the door. So you, you tell them, say, my hope is in the living God's sukkah. And they'll say, what is that? Say, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you that Adonai sent his word. He became a sukkah for us, died for us, rose again. Receive that word tonight. Amen. Let's just, um, let's just wait a moment on the spirit. Father, we bless you tonight. We praise you. We thank you, Father, for your presence in the house. Thank you for such a wonderful evening of your people. Father, families, I pray that all of our families, Father, I, I don't know, Father, what your plan holds for the generations to come and those generations, but I pray that you bless them to keep them to guide us, Father, as we keep our eyes on you. May we keep our eyes focused on the glory cloud, on Yeshua's Messiah. Continue to give us hope. Continue to give us strength. And may we stand strong in you, not by might or power, but by your spirit. And all his people said, Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand tonight. And let's give Yeshua a big hand of praise. Can we do that? Amen. So, so let me explain before we begin our ministry. We have communion here. If you'd like to partake of communion as you come, you're welcome to do so. A body of believers, if you're a believer in Yeshua, we welcome you to the communion table. But what we're going to do is a little different than last year and the years before. Our team is going to be up here. There's going to be music playing, and we're going to keep this reverent in the sanctuary. If you want a fellowship, we have, we have room in the back. There's places to talk. You can go outside. You can go in the sukkah, whatever you want to do. Um, enjoy the community tonight. But if you want ministry this evening, we welcome every person in this house. If you want personal ministry, I find this season, uh, for me, it's a blessing because this is one time a year that I can say a blessing over every household, over every person. That window of opportunity is open. And so I'm going to encourage you that we're going to uh, come up and, and you can take turns doing this. Uh, we're going to do it in an orderly fashion. It's going to be a little different because last year we had a line. You know, we've always had a line. We're going to have a line this year. There's, there's too many people. We're all here, and I don't mean to say too many in a negative way, but it's too many to form a line. We'd be all the way to Kroger. So, so what I'm going to ask you to do, there's, um, there's been a few that have asked uh, some of our older folks that have to get home. Some can't see at night, and we've, they've asked if they could come first. But I'm going to ask you, if you need to use a restroom, that's fine. You can walk about if, here's my thing, if you stay in the sanctuary, um, I'm going to ask that you keep it reverent. I'm going to ask if you want to pray, you can do that. You can watch as we minister, that's fine. We want a chance to minister to everybody in this house. 
And if the Lord gives you a prophetic word, be ready for that too. Because uh, he can change people's lives like that. So if the prophetic is new to you, it's nothing to be afraid of. Nobody's going to hurt you. Nobody. We just pray over you. And if Adonai speaks in our heart and in our ear, we'll share it with you. Amen. So just lift your hands, guys. Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, again, we thank you for your presence and your spirit in the house tonight. We give you the glory and the honor as we welcome you. This is your celebration, Father. Bo Yeshua. Come fill this house, fill this place in Yeshua's name. Put your hand over your heart and say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, fill this place. I want to be your sukkah. Help me to dwell in you. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.